Hello all, welcome to another quick learning. Today I'm going to go over some basics of macros in Excel. So you use macros when you automate some tasks that you would do redundantly over time. So first of all, in this ribbon at the top, if you not see the developer tab, you're going to have to go ahead and add that. So by clicking in the upper left, uh, you can see Excel options, and then under that, you should see show developer tab once you check that you should be able to see this and then you'll see a number of different buttons here on the left hand side that you can use to see your macros their code and record new macros so first of all let's just record a simple macro so let's go ahead and just record uh, you can give it any name you want as long as it meets the condition that there's no spaces in it. So if I wanted to name it macro one, this will not work. If I click OK, it'll tell me that the name does not begin with a letter or an underscore, so you can't start with numbers. The name contains a space or other invalid characters, so because that space is there, it won't accept it. And the, the name cannot conflict with any built-in Excel functions. Okay, so let's just keep it as macro one. You can set a shortcut key that will make it run automatically. So if you did control Q or something, whenever you hit control Q, this macro will run. And then if we just click OK, the macro has started recording. You can see now that the stop recording is there. So if we click in cell one and say macro uh, is running, and then we hit stop recording, we've recorded the macro. You can see the macro, if you click on macro, you can see here's the macro and we could run it uh, from here. Or we could step into it, which is uh, looking at the code and running it uh, line by line. But if you want to see the code, you can just click here on Visual Basic or you can use the shortcut Alt F11. So if I click here, this opens up uh, the VBA code editor. So you can do a lot of things with VBA code. Um, and you can learn a lot about how the VBA code is gen or what VBA code did write uh, by running macros. So if you go to modules, you'll see a module one after your macro has been recorded, and you can see the code that it has generated. So in this case, it's a very simple macro where it just selects uh, cell A1, puts in macro, selects B1, puts in is. Uh, selects C1, puts in running, and selects D1 in, at the end, and then that's the end of the macro. So if we delete this and we run the macro again, you can see it does the same thing that we did before. So if you have a, a lot of different steps that you're doing in a manual process and they're very consistent over time, uh, a macro is a very good tool uh, to automate that that processing. So there's, other, there's also another option called use relative references. So let's just see how that changes how the macro is written when we record a macro. So we're going to go ahead and record a macro. This is just going to be macro 2. So I'll do the same thing. Macro is running and then select FD1 and then just stop recording. And we'll go to the code and see how that changed. So you'll see that at, in module one, it puts the code uh, for macro two just under macro one. And you can see the code that it generates it is slightly different. And it's using what's called these relative references instead of the absolute, you know, A1 and then the active cell and so on. So because the first cell that I started out with was eight uh, rows down and two rows over. Uh, when I selected A1, it creates this offset and such. So I'm just going to delete this, actually. Whoops. And I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete. Uh, this doesn't really matter for what I'm doing. All right. So now we'll see how these differ when we run the, the code of the macros. So that's saved automatically. 
So I'm going to get a blank sheet. Now I'm going to go to the macros and I'm going to run macro 1. So it writes on the first row macro is running. I'll delete it again and I'll run macro 1. You can see it's always going to be on this first line because it's using absolute references. It goes to cell A1, does what it does, B1, and then C1. Now I'm going to start in cell A5, and I'm going to go to the macros, and I'm going to select macro 2. And when I run this, you can see it starts wherever I start my active cell. So if I start the active cell here, and I run ma macro 2, it'll do that. But if I start here, and I run 1, it doesn't matter where I start. It's always going to run uh, at the top here. So if you only care about the relative positions of where you want your macro to start and end and work and etc., then go ahead and select that relative references. Otherwise, if it's always going to be in these specific cells and you want the macro to work in those specific cells all the time, then you'll just uh, not select this. Another thing to note, because macros can do a lot of powerful things, they can change files, they can download files off the internet, etc. There is some possibility that a macro could introduce a virus or some other thing into your computer. So there is a lot of security around macros. So if you go to the macro security, uh, by default you're going to have this disable all macros with notification. Um, and then you can select other options. Uh, so you can enable all macros, uh, but it's not recommended because it'll automatically run any code associated with that file, which may or may not be good. Um, so this is generally what users are going to have on their computers. So knowing that, uh, when a user opens a file that has a macro, what you're going to find is it's going to have a dialog box that says, uh, well, let's just save it and see what that dialog box says. All right, so let's save as. And so another thing to note, if you have something that has a macro, you're going to have to save, save it as a Excel macro-enabled workbook. Now let's just call this my test Excel. We're going to go ahead and save that. So let's close this and let's open this. And now let's just open that my test Excel and you'll see you'll get the security warning macros have been disabled so a user would have to come in here and enable this content or change their uh, macro settings in order for it to always be enabled in order for it to run. So those are the basics on macros. I hope you guys uh, were able to follow along and hope you can kind of fiddle with it and see what you can do with uh, recording macros and automating some of your tasks. Thank you very much.